And now we return to the People's Paradise Podcast. What's going on with you people? What's going on in your world? It's your boy JT. We're back again with the People's Paradise Podcast. Thank you for thank you for pressing the play button. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for playing a part in this movement that is the People's Paradise. And shout out to everybody who's been tuning in to my podcast, man. Shout out to you if you've been listening to me on iTunes, or on SoundCloud, or on Facebook, just any so any platform that you can find me on. I want to thank you. And also, if that was you who's been tweeting me on Twitter and telling me about how my name, JT's Bodus Dream, how Bodus is not a word in the English language, hey, hey, forgive me for being creative. It's not my fault that I was born with a creative mind. I wanted. I figured out. Anybody ever used the word boldest? So why not use? Why not use the word boldest? Um, just to relax a little bit and tell you what's going on right now. I'm recording this right now in the hotel room. Which, by the way, let me know in the chat room when you talk to me in the future. Let me know in the chat room how's uh, how's the audio for this? Because I was gonna go to the library and do this. I was gonna go to the library and do this, but it just man, I had. I was like, fuck it, man. I was like, I have a room in here. I got the doors closed. I got the room to myself. There's nobody else in here. I was like, man, let me just try and see how it turns out um, when I'm doing this solitary. So here I am, and here I am. Um, we got a lot to talk about today, actually. Got a lot I want to touch on. In the people's playlist, we're going to talk about this thing that's trending on Twitter right now called Disney Scenes You Will Never Forget. Basically talk about Disney scenes that you remember as a child, like a lot of Disney scenes that you saw maybe in Lion King, maybe in Aladdin. It's all those little Disney scenes that made you cry as a kid and gave you false ideals of what romance possibly could be. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of you, I'm, I'm just giving you, I'm just saying it like that because I watched Aladdin a lot as a child and... I really did believe that when I turned 19, I really would marry a very beautiful Middle Eastern woman while flying on a magic carpet above Saudi Arabia. Like, I really did believe that when I was a child. So, we're going to have that. We're going to also um, talk about Alicia Carter's song that she did, speaking of Disney. I think this was Pixar, the uh, friend of this called How Far I'll Go. How Far I'll Go. Get close to the mic. How Far I'll Go. And we're also going to talk about Nicki Minaj's song, Ain't Gonna Let Go, which this song, um, I guess it released last night or today. I just listened to it, listened to it over a few times, and I'm going to give my review about that. We're going to talk about the trailer that they have for this new Netflix series, Series of Unfortunate Events, and that's based off of this one book that they had that came out. It was a book series that was really popular in the early 2000s. They released, remember that movie they released with it? Um, The movie that they released had Jim Carrey in it. Jim Carrey did. Jim Carrey is great. I love Jim Carrey, but just that movie that came out, I don't think they did. I'm gonna I'm talk about the whole thing more when it when it comes up. Next thing we're gonna get into, and in the people's politic, we're gonna talk about Donald Trump being voted Person of the Year. Donald Trump being voted Person of the Year. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the people's prayer. We're gonna give our control, uh, condolences to Selva J. Alita. Who was kind of like the Oprah of India? Want to give our, our condolences to her, <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. And after that, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. So I guess we'll start. Where, where do we want to start with? I love all these things. We want to start with. I guess we'll start with the people's per- politics because I always start with the people's playlist. I think we'll start with the people's politics this time. So Donald Trump has been voted by Time Magazine the person of the year. Now, naturally, there are a lot of people who feel some type of way about this. <laughs> um, naturally, there are a lot of people who feel like, you know, a lot of people are really like, you know, like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? Donald Trump is the person of the year. I'm actually going to Twitter right now to pull up some of the tweets that people have told me about it. Hold on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, here we go. Yep. Um, needless to say, a lot of people feel some type of way about it. Me personally, I, I kind of. I mean, well, here's my thing. Theoretically, 
to be all the way honest, most people feel Donald Trump shouldn't be person of the year because they don't like Donald Trump. That just it is what it is. That's just a given. It's all for, to a lot of people. Donald Trump being voted person of the year is like Adolf Hitler being voted time person of the year, which he was in 1938. Me personally, I think he deserves to be person of the year because every morning I wake up, nigga, I pinch myself in 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 disbelief that Donald Trump has been elected. President of the United States. I really cannot believe that this we live. Donald Trump is president of the United States. That is the most. That is so unbelievable to me. But at the same time, it's kind of funny because it's like I've said it on this podcast a, th- a dozen times. You now have no excuse to not achieve your dreams. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. You have no excuse whether you want to be a singer, whether you want to be a, a, a goddamn great CEO, whether you want to be a great chef. You now have no excuse to succeed. Even if you live in a third world country, you have no excuse why you can't succeed because Donald Trump is the president of the greatest country in the United States of America. A television personality star is the president of the United States of America. The greatest country in the world is being led by a television personality. If start making, if that's not a reason for you to go out in life and go after what you really want in life, is that not a reason for you to go out and get what you want to get? Then, bro, I don't know what to tell you. I, you really need a, you really need that, bro. Donald Trump is president of the United States. That every time I say, every time I say that, that should that should really make you say, you know what? I can do anything I want to do. So, just on that strength alone, just on that strength alone, I feel that Donald Trump should definitely be person of the year. He's definitely earned that right. Now, some people uh, feel the ter- so, uh, different type of way. Um, Anna Navarro, shout out to her, famous journalist. She said, "Hard to argue with the time selections of selection of President Elect of the United States Trump as pre- Person of the Year. He defied political gravity. He beat the odds. Divided and conquered, he won. Divided and conquered, he won. That's true. He beat the odds. He he rose, and everybody thought he would fall. So I gotta give him that credit." Uh, Greta Greta von Susteren, who is a uh, she's just a, uh, a, Twitter, a television personality in some foreign country. Even all the non-voters of the real Donald Trump have to admit he should be chosen by Time Magazine as Person of the Year. Hey, I'll I tell you, like I just told you right now, I was not a voter of Donald Trump. I voted for Hillary Clinton because I felt that Hillary Clinton would be by far the best candidate for the President of the United States. She was the most qualified in my eyes. However, Donald Trump won. Donald Trump came out the victor in the victory. He came out the victory in the battle, and I got I got to give him credit for that because he won fair and square. And one thing I'm gonna tell you about Donald Trump once again, I did. I'm gonna stop saying that because I, I I can I can I can I can pick out parts of a situation that I might like despite the fact that I didn't like the outcome. One of the reasons I did like the Donald Trump victory is because even though I didn't like him as a as a president of the United States, I thought he was a funny guy. I don't think he should be president of the United States. I liked how he won. He didn't win by the strength of he. Even though they said that whole bullshit about how he uh, he won the electoral votes and he didn't win the popular vote, reality is he won by the strength of the people. The people decided that he should be president of the United States. That's one thing I liked about his movement. The people decided by themselves that he should be president of the United States. You got to show love and you got to show respect to somebody who who got, who won by the strength of the people. Now, regardless of what they say about the whole popular vote thing, you know, it is what it is. You know, personally, like I said, I would have rather Hillary to win. I don't want them to do that whole thing. And we've talked about this in the podcast. You and me, I've told you before, I don't want to do that whole thing where they say we're going to recount the votes. Because in my opinion, there's no point of doing that. There's no point in having a recount of votes when we we haven't done that before. We didn't do that when it was Hillary versus Barack Obama for the Democratic nomination in 2008, and Hillary won the more popular votes. While Barack Obama had more of the electoral votes, we didn't say that. We didn't say I have a recount of votes then. So it is what it is. So yeah, I absolutely feel he should be president. I actually feel he should be person of the year. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to tweet me. Send me a tweet. Send me your opinion at JT's Border String. I want to see that beautiful avatar of you. 
whether it's you taking a selfie or whether it's you with a dog face like some of you of my followers have. And I want you to tweet me and tell me what you think at JT's Boldest Dream. That's JTS B O L D E S T D R E A M. I want you to tell me what do you feel about. I really want to hear your opinion about things. I want to hear what you think. You know, that's what makes it that's what makes the um, like I said, that's what makes the podcast cool, man. What makes the podcast cool is when I have you come around and give me your opinions, whether it's the fact that you hate me and you think I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, or it is the fact that you agree with what I'm talking about, or you just want to give your opinion. You know, it is what it is. I literally was debating with people all night on Twitter about certain little topics that they had going on. <clears throat> I ain't gonna lie to you. Last night, trip, Twitter, Twitter was hot as hell last night. Twitter was hot as hell last I was, matter of fact, after we get into the main topics, we're gonna talk about what I we're gonna talk about my Twitter, my little Twitter situation. We're gonna talk about that. About my little Twitter battles with people on Twitter. But outside of that, one thing that they had that was trending on Twitter that I thought was um I thought was really cute was Disney scenes that you will never forget. I thought that was actually pretty cute. Um so I don't know who started this. I'm reading the tweet right now. I think it said it was from at they say I'm crazy. He said childhood, a time of happiness, right? Well, mostly, although plenty of movies put kids and childs alike through the emotional roller coaster, people are sharing the Disney moment that they will never forget with the appropriate hashtag. You know, um, Disney scenes will I will never forget when they all held hands in my heart. My heart nearly broke. Um, wow. <clears throat> yeah, I'm with. So basically, um, the tweet itself is basically everybody's tweeting with the hashtag Disney scenes I will never forget. And they're tweeting pictures or their own opinions or tweets that, of Disney scenes they will never forget. Like, I'm going to go to some of them. Let's see, Disney scenes I will never forget. I'm going to tell you. Well, I'm gonna tell, I guess I could tell you some of mine first. I'm, I'm going to tell you some of mine first. Let me tell you some Disney scenes I will never forget. Some Disney scenes I will never forget. If I can name any, it's probably... Hold on. One Disney scene I can never forget is the Scar and Simba battle at the end of Lion King where uh, Simba turned to Scar and said, Run away, Scar, and never return. And then Scar said, Yes, as you wish, your majesty. And he, um, and he sneaked him, and he sneaked him with the dust in the eye. And he sneaked him with the dust in the eye. And, um, Simba got pissed off, and the nigga started rolling in the dirt. The guy, <laughs> like, and, um, lightweight Scar won the battle, but Simba got like that last good move where he kick dropped him off the, uh, off the damn, uh, proud pride rock. And then them hyenas got into him. That was one of my favorite scenes. Um, one Disney scene I guess I'll never forget is when in Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Yeah, I was a really big Lion King fan. In Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, when Nala, um, not Nala, Kovu, Kovu's, um, Kovu's Pride had actually tried to jump Simba and they failed. And then Kovu went back to Pride Rock and was trying to pre- plead his case and was trying to explain to Simba, you know, Hey, you misunderstood. And Kim, uh, Simba exiled Kovu, and he was running away, and all those damn animals was kicking him in the eye, and the giraffes was kicking him and cussing him and shit. It was hell of a fun. And my favorite, the, the scene I'm trying to say I won't forget is when they had the song playing, um, I know love will find a Let me see if I can play it. It's a song called Love Will Find a Way. I was so afraid. I was so afraid. It was as somebody's even running. Love will find a way. But in the song, um, Kovu runs away. Kovu runs away, and he's sad and, and open and shit. And then Nala runs away because she's mad at her father for a banishing Kovu. And then they run into each other, and it was just a really beautiful song. And if only, yeah, found it. Here we go. And if only they. And Christmas party's not happening. All right, it's canceled. Fuck your Christmas party, excuse my language. And if only they, and if only, and if only they would see it too. This song, this one right here, I love this song. Oh my god, I love this, I love this song so much. I love this song. I know, love will find a way. Everywhere I go, I know 
Love is never gone, and so it never dies in a perfect world. Shining in. It's that watching the scene right now with Molly. Molly sees Kobe walking behind her, and you see the happiness in her face. But when I was a kid, I used to love this part. And if only they would feel it too The happiness I feel with you They know Love will find a way Anywhere we go We are we are Beautiful scene, man. We round of applause for Lion King. That was a really beautiful scene. That was a scene I can never forget. Um... I think of some other scenes I could do because I got a lot of them. Um, let's see, you know what? This technically doesn't count, but Disney scenes I'll never forget is I'm gonna say I'm gonna say any scene that happened in the Kingdom Hearts game, any scene that happened in the Kingdom Hearts game is a scene that I can't forget. I I I loved Kingdom Hearts so much when I was a child, bro. Like. Any scene that had something to do with Disney and Kingdom Hearts, I feel like was ever cool. Any scene. I'm talking about whether it was Hercules, um, him and Hercules, uh, Sora going to the Olympian Coliseum and fighting Hercules, whether it was him meeting Mulan, the dragon. Oh, sh- no. In Kingdom Hearts 2, when they went back to Agrabah and they fought against the genie, the evil genie Jafar and shit like that, that was a great one. Like any scene, Disney scene in, in uh, Kingdom Hearts, I'm going to say. Now, Go on Twitter and see what some other what other people put. Um, shout out to Goodnight Sluts, <laughs> who um, who put poor Dumbo, whose mother was in a cage. She put the picture of Dumbo when he was uh, with his mother, and his mother was like taking care of him and shit. Poor Dumbo, that's a good scene. I will say the um, the adult like nature of her Twitter name. Really contrast this tweet. This name, Goodnight Sluts. This girl's name is Goodnight Sluts, and she tweets a picture of Dumbo getting rocked to sleep by his mom. Like, that's just cute to me. Um, let's see. It, uh, let's keep picking up ones of Dumbo. I don't want to talk about Dumbo the whole time. Got the one. Forget Dumbo. I think, like, Dumbo was the number one Disney character. Disney scenes I will never forget. At Kate, she tweet Bo and Sully. Oh, and Monsters, Inc. But I don't think that was. I think Monsters Inc. was was Pixar. I don't know if that counts. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't even know if Pixar and, and then if Pixar and Disney are the same thing. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people put Pixar movies, but I Nick Wild. I still want to beat up the. I still want to beat up the scouts that harassed and muzzled young Nick Wild from Zootopia. But see, I don't know if that, I think that's Zick Disney's Pixar. I don't know. If, I don't know. I, I really don't know if Disney and Pixar are two different things. Tweet me and let me know. Are Disney and Pixar two different things? I want to know that because I I don't want to be here saying um, I don't want to be here saying they're the same thing and they're not. But what well, a story is good. It's a lot of good. I always say like Disney. You know, and even that was weird because like a lot of Disney and Pixar movies, I'll go to the theater and watch, and I won't enjoy as much as I used to when I was a child because I guess now. My standards for how good a movie should be have increased. Like I've, I went to go see Zootopia and Jungle Book this year, and um, and Harry Potter and Harry Potter's um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. But all of them, I really didn't enjoy that much. I like Zootopia because I like the artwork. Like I love the graphic design of Zootopia. The graphic design was beautiful in and of itself. I had a great time, even though there was a fat old white guy next to me bumping me on the show every time and saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. But other than that, it was a really great show, really great movie. I think it's just like it's because since I'm older now, and I still, I, I, I always still go and see movies like this. But because I'm older now, like my standards for what a good movie is are higher. You know, like even like with Avatar, the movie that came out in 2009, I watched it, and you know, I know what it is. I'm gonna tell you what it is. I'm gonna be all the way honest. It's because. I don't, and I, I, don't, I learned this about myself, um, I think really this year. I don't think anything is great if I can do it. 
I don't think the ability to write magnificent poetry is great because I know I can do it. I don't think making great fantasy films is great because I know I can do it. I know for a fact I can write. I'm, I'm, I can. I do playwriting sometimes. I know for a fact that I can playwright and write and verse something really, really great, a really great film. The most I know I can write the next great fantasy film because that's not that's my natural niche. Like fantasy and sci-fi fantasy. As a writer, that's my niche. So I know for a fact my skills are solid as fucking. Excuse my language, but. Um, I just, you know, I just feel, I'm like, eh, eh, like, I don't, I don't really feel like, I don't really feel, um, I don't really feel amazed by that because I know I can do it versus like, for example, a comedy film, I'm always feel somewhat insecure about my ability to write jokes and my ability to tell jokes to my ability to make people laugh. I'm a great entertainer. I'm a great entertainer, but as far as like just creating humor, I always feel kind of insecure about that part of myself. So when I watch a Deadpool, when I watch uh, Sausage Party, when I watch, um, not the American Pie, the American Pies were ass. Uh, when I watch a Kevin Hart or when I watch another movie, I'll always be more amazed by those movies because I feel insecure about my ability to be able to produce it. And I think that's like that with most people, like even like with Beyonce. I notice a lot of musicians, uh, most, the general public regards Beyonce as amazing, one of the greatest artists in the world. Most artists, most musicians, don't. most singers don't really regard Beyonce as the greatest singer in the world because in their mind, they feel like I can sing better than her or at least on that level. You know what I mean? We can't look up to somebody and aim for to be like somebody if we feel like we're on the same levels. And we have to look at somebody with some level of amazement. And I feel... You know, even like with podcasting, like I always feel like I have to go a little bit harder and I have to be a little bit more amazing than the next person because at the end of the day, I want people to be able to look at me and, and strive for something. Look at me and be able, and look at me and say, you know, I want to strive to get to the level that he, where he is at. I want people to look at me and say, I want to get to his level and and I want people to look at me with greatness. I want you to look at me like I'm your friend. I want you to look at me like I'm your buddy. But at the same time, I want you to look at me and see inspiration. I want you to look at me and see amazement and be like, you know what? I want to get to that point. I want to get to that point of of greatness when it comes to podcasting or broadcasting or being a personality in general. Like, I want to be the guy out there doing great at everything that I do. Like, I I want to be at that point. I want people to look at me like that. So... You know it just it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's that's um that's my that's my motivation, man. That's my motivation with anything. Like I want, I want to be an inspiration to people. I want to be an inspiration to people, and I, you know, I have to strive for greatness to be that. I have to strive for greatness. My whole goal in life was always to be the most charismatic person. My goal in life was always to be the person who had the most influence, who had the most power, who had. That type of je ne sais quoi that when I talk to somebody, they left the conversation feeling like, man, I just felt like I just met my long lost twin. And I've always taken pride in my ability to be able to have a conversation with you or somebody else and be able to establish a connection with them. So I um yeah, man, that's um you know, that's what makes JTJT. That's what makes JTJT. And I I take pride in that. So, um, after that long rant, <laughs> after that long rant, we're going to go ahead and get to the next topic. Um, let's see what else I've been neglecting. Let's see what else. Um, oh, yeah. Um, um, the next thing in the people's playlist, we have Alicia Carter, How Far I'll Go. Okay. So, Alicia Carter, as you know, for the last 14 days, I've been on the Alicia Carter addiction. I think she's one of the most gifted, most talented singers and artists that we have right now. And to explain why I like Alicia Carter so much, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing her first name correct, the reason why I love Alicia Carter so much is because with Alicia Carter, I can relate to her story. You know, I can relate to her voice. You know, when I was growing up, and I've told you this in the podcast before. I wasn't the most popular kid. You know, I was kind of introverted. I was, I was, I was extrovert. I've always been extroverted, but I haven't always been accepted. You know, when I was growing up, I got picked on a lot because I was like the nerd in class. I used to come to school. Everybody wanted to talk about pussy and the new Too Short song and the new Chris Brown record, which I loved all of that. But I've always had a fascination with literature. I always had a fascination with fantasy. So that was my world. That was the world where I felt more of myself was at. And you know, a lot of people weren't feeling that. A lot of people weren't feeling that. So, 
I always count. I always encountered a lot of animosity from people because of that, and I just had to deal with it. Um, so, um, I could relate to her story. I could relate to her voice because I always felt like I was just the outcast. You know, I always felt like I was the outcast. So I like how in her song she's accepted being an outcast and use that as her voice because she's became the voice for the voiceless and. It kind of it kind of made me look at myself a little bit different because, like a lot of the time, like I had a um, I don't know. I consider myself like a um, I don't know. Let me just stay on her. So I like that, and she she has a really great voice. I love her voice. I love her singing. I love her songwriting ability. There's this one song that she did for the new movie that's out in theaters called Moana, that Hawaiian movie with the rock in it, um, produced by Disney and Pixar, and. The song that she did is one called How Far I'll Go. And in How Far I'll Go, this song, she basically said, um, she basically said, um, not she basically said, the song is so, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play some of it. I found it on Spotify and I was like, oh my God, this song is amazing. Like, I really, I'm not gonna lie to you. She might, the thing about Alicia Gata is she might occupy that same spot that Demi Lovato has where, like, all, all middle American young white girls love her. And I guess I must be the middle American white girl because I love her too. But it's this song. I'm gonna play a little bit of it because I can't play all of it because if I do play all of it, then it's copyright infringement. <laughs> This is my favorite part. Man, I love that song. And so, I recommend that you listen to that song. Now, I want to congratulate her for interpreting the song really well. But the lyrics itself were written by this one guy named Lynn Manuel Miranda. Miranda. Who actually is trending on Twitter for some strange reason? I don't know why, but I'm I'm gonna tweet him and also tell him, you know, thank you for that, man. The lyrics that you gave in that song were amazing. The lyrics, that part in the song where she said, where she said, um, you see that, you see the, you see the line where the sky meets, the, you see the line where the sky meets the sea. It calls me. I feel like that every single day of my life. Every single day of my life when I'm dealing with certain strife or dealing with certain issues and I want to cry and grab a tissue, I feel like that same way. Like, like even when my mom's telling me, okay, what you're doing, your dreams are not going to work. When my, my aunt's telling me that, when my uncles are telling me that, when my brothers are telling me that, I feel like that all the time. Like, I've been like, man, but you don't understand. Like, there's something out there that's calling me. So, I get that feeling. I understand that. I understand that passion. I understand having that feeling like, bro, like it's something out there that's calling me. I gotta go. Like, I don't know. I, I understand that feeling. So I, I gotta, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I, I understand where she's coming from and I felt that. And so I want to thank her for interpreting that. I want to thank you for writing that. And I recommend to you that you listen to that song, um, How Far I Go by Alicia Gata. Very great song, man. Very great song. A very talented artist, man. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that we have somebody like her in the top. You know what's weird? I didn't think about this until now. For R and B, for R and B to be a historically African American genre, if you notice, the top people right now who are singing R and B aren't really even African American. The top people in R and B are. Ariana Grande, Alicia Cara, on some so- Justin T- Justin Bieber, in my opinion. You know the top artists in R and B aren't even really African American, so you you see how the roles have kind of changed. It's kind of like how with EDM was. You know, with EDM, EDM in itself in the beginning wasn't a a, 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 a white dominated music genre. Before it was, it started in Chicago. It was it came from black people, obviously, but it went to Europe and it became big and um, you know, most of the DJs who perform it now are, you know, you guess it right. So I like, you know, I, and I like diversity, so I like that. You know, I like how things have changed. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is uh this Nicki Minaj song. I don't really wanna talk about it that much because I only I'll be honest with you, I only listened to it once. Um I didn't I'm gonna be honest with you from I don't know I, I I really get tired of Nicki Minaj a lot of the time because 
I don't know. I think people call Nicki Minaj dope because she has great delivery. She has good delivery, but a lot of the time when she starts rapping really fast and her, I, I expect better lyrics from Nicki Minaj because her lyrics in this song were were really just trashed, were trash to me. And I just, I, I expect better lyrics from her, but I don't even really. But now that I think about it, when I listen to the song, I don't even know if if Nicki Minaj really has genius lyrics per se. You know, she has good delivery. She has a really like a great dramatic style of delivery when she raps. But as far as like her lyrics, I don't really feel it's it's like all that. So I don't know. Me personally, I didn't think that I didn't like the song that much. So you know, it's what it is. I didn't think she had that many good connections in the song. I, I didn't see. I didn't sense any wittiness with the bars, and, and that's just my opinion about the song. Now, if you can listen to it, I know the barbs, the barbs, whatever they call it, Nicki Minaj fans. I know the barbs are gonna listen to this and they're gonna get mad at me and be like, you know what? You a hater. You just don't want Nicki Minaj to win because she's a woman and she's this and she's that. Hey, listen, hey. Whether she was a man or a woman, I will tell her her, her bars are trash. And I just wasn't feeling this song. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, if I had to choose between Alicia Cotta and Nicki Minaj, both artistically and romantically, I would choose Alicia Cotta. You know, that's just JT being JT. Now, uh, next thing we're going to get into. Oh, it's like, that's sad. I was wondering what that noise was. That's the refrigerator. I hate that. Mm, mm, mm. That's the refrigerator in the background. So, the next thing we're going to get into is um, we're going to talk about Netflix series of unfortunate events. Netflix's series of unfortunate events. This one was a. Um, this one is this one is a movie, um, not a movie. Netflix is basically releasing a series, and it's going to be based on the book series called "Series of Unfortunate Events," which I want to commend. I, I ain't gonna lie to you, Netflix has been on their shit lately. Netflix don't be bullshit. Netflix is getting all the good shows. I'm thinking about canceling my Hulu and getting my Netflix again because I already have a. Um, I'm gonna do that. Fuck that. You know, I'm canceling my Netflix. You know, what? I'm doing it live. I'm, can- I'm canceling my Netflix. I'm canceling my Hulu right now, and I'm getting my Netflix back again. Um, but um, they have a um, what was I gonna say? I, I had it in my head. I had it in my, I had it in my head right now. They have a um, they are doing this series of unfortunate events. Was based off of this book series that I read as a child. Was really really popular series called Series of Unfortunate Events. Uh, with this series, it's really cool because in this series, um, it's I like this series because it's just really it's really quirky, it's really creative. Now they released a movie based on it in two thousand four, two thousand five, where Jim Carrey is the lead as Count Olaf. Who, if, yeah, and if you've never heard of this series or read a book at all or seen the movie, he's like the evil guy. I think they made his character too silly. Versus of how Count Olaf is in the book because in the book he's all basically an asshole. He's a savage. He kills a lot of people. For it to be a book, for it to be a book series for children, he kills a lot of people. So I, um, you know, I kind of feel some type of way about that. I, I don't know how I should feel about that. He does kill a lot of people, but I think this series. I think this series. I think it's still going to be from the trailer that I saw. From the trailer that I saw that Netflix has. I still feel it's going to be a little bit too comical, but at the same time, I feel like it'll probably convey more of who, it'll probably convey the book and series in full more, because in the movie, they try to put 10 books in one movie, and that never works, that never works, you know, I'm one of the people who said that with the Harry Potter movie series, I felt like they should have did one part, one half of the movie, they should have divided a book into two movies, because each movie each movie was like I didn't like any other Harry Potter movies except maybe the first one because I was just getting introduced to it but any other one I watched after that I didn't like and I wouldn't theater, I wouldn't theaters to see two of them I wouldn't theaters to see The Order of the Phoenix and I went in theaters to see Deathly Hollows. and both of them I was like man I'm I'm not feeling this that much but you know that's just my opinion that's just my that's just my opinion you know you can tell me what you think about it if you want but i i just wouldn't feel it that much you know so um yeah so i suggest you go see it now i'm googling right now to see if it's already on there because if it's already on there then i'm gonna go watch it right now and you know fuck this podcast <laughs> i just say i just say i'm just doing being stupid Okay. See. 
Yeah, it's the trailer. Yeah, this is come out to 2017. Okay, cool. But I might check it out. Yeah, I miss my Netflix, man. I'm gonna go watch. I'm gonna go. Oh, is it already on there? I don't know. It's not. Oh, let me make sure. Oh, let me make sure. Something ain't right. Yeah, it's not on there yet. Okay, it's not. But yeah, we'll see. I'll check it out. I want you also to tell me what you think about it. I want you to tell me what you think, and I want you to give me your opinion, and we can have a conversation from there. Now, um, I think that covers everything I want to talk about in the People's Playlist. At least the interesting stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um so with that being said, with that being said, I'm guess I'm going to go ahead and um um I don't know. Oh yeah, people's prayer with Silva J Alita. This is the last thing. I don't you know I don't want to talk about that because I don't want to leave you guys on a negative note. You know, I want you guys to leave this podcast feeling happy. So I just say smile it's be happy and please tweet me at JT's boldest John at at JT at JT be aware. D E S T D R E A M. And I want you guys to tell me what you think. I want you guys to tell me, you know, what's your opinion on the podcast. I want you to tell me. I want you to talk to me. And you can also message me on Instagram at JT's Border Dream. That's J T S B O L D S T D R E A M. <clears throat> so, with that being said, um, thank you for connecting with me. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for being a part of my family that is the People's Paradise Podcast. Um, go ahead and shut this off. Make sure you listen to me again. I want to hear you guys' opinion on my podcast and we can have a conversation. Sounds good? Thank you.